So, you have an idea that you want to write about. It sticks to your imagination like glue. You want to bring it to life. You have to get it down on paper. But how do you begin? How do you make your first mark on the blank page in front of you? Today, we cover the first most vital step of writing, tackling that intimidating blankness. Welcome to Word C, guidance for writers new and veteran. Now I've heard it I don't know how many times, but smart, imaginative people sit down in front of their computers and notebooks, open a blank new document or page, and then one of two things happens. Either they can't think of the right words to say, or no words come to their mind at all. The first thing I think we should acknowledge about this situation is that it's natural, inevitable really. We want to do right by our imaginations, don't we? So we think to ourselves, if I could just find the perfect words to express what I'm thinking... I mean, the English language only has so many words to choose from, right? I have to get it correct eventually. That mindset, though, puts a parking boot on you before you can even write your first words. Julia Cameron says in The Right to Write, a great book I'll be referencing over and over again, quote, Most of us try to write too carefully. We try to do it right. We try to sound smart. We try, period. Writing goes much better when we don't work at it so much, when we give ourselves permission to just hang out on the page." Unquote. The trouble of the blank page is one of mindset, not knowledge. There is no silver bullet for the problem of a rocky start. You need to let go in your heart, not find an answer in your head, and just as Cameron said, hang out and be yourself on the page. Remember, nothing you're writing is ever done until you say it is. You could write the first line of a story a thousand times before you feel it's where you want it to be, or maybe you write it only ten times, but very, very rarely will you ever get it right the first time. And how boring would that be, to say what you mean with perfect clarity all the time? Writing should be an act of discovery and revelation, not just of filling in boxes like paperwork. There may be no silver bullet to cleanly slay your trouble with the blank page, but here's a few ways in which I load my own chamber, so to speak, when I sit down to write and am faced with intimidating blankness. Firstly, I try doing something that I call synonym hunting. So when I'm wrestling with a line, I often know what I want to say, but the exact how just isn't forming yet, so I start looking for something close to what I mean. For example, Say I want to describe that something is bad, but the only word that's cropping up in my mind is disaster. And that word's got connotations that I'm not really after right now. And believe me, getting hung up on a key word in a key sentence can really grind your writing groove to a halt. But I probably didn't even know that tragedy was the word I was really after until I began looking up synonyms for disaster. And sometimes it's that easy. Break yourself out of your funk by giving yourself a close jumping off point. Sometimes though, the articulation problem you're having isn't related to any one sentence or key word. Instead, it's more macro level, an overall mental block. And if you're finding your mind blank, that can really sour your mood during a writing session. To get around this, I sometimes choose my favorite words and then write them on a sheet of paper just to remind myself that language is still under my control and that I still enjoy the act of creation. So here are some of my favorite words. Iron. Engine. Fantastic. Crimson. Thunderstorm. Dawn. Obliterate. Autumnal. Vernal. Shoal. Evening. Tower. Again from The Right to Write, Cameron actually says, quote, The brain enjoys writing. It enjoys the act of naming things, the process of association and discernment. Picking words is like picking apples. This one looks delicious. Unquote. I think of that activity as a kind of mind walk, a reminder of the joy that writing can bring, even at a sentence or singular word level. But when a particular scene or key event in your book isn't forming in your head, sometimes it helps to look for what I like to call impactful images. It really helps when you're hung up asking yourself what happens in this scene, to whom, when, and where, to turn the camera around onto your audience. 
What sort of image do you think would grip your audience to communicate the point of the scene that you're wrestling with? What would grab and engage their senses? And be sure to ask yourself, what is the point of this scene that you're writing? To develop the character, to tie up a plot thread, to introduce a new plot thread, maybe to make the reader feel a certain strong emotion? Asking questions, especially of yourself and your own work, is a best practice in creative writing that any writer will benefit from practicing. Once your scene's goals are outlined in your head, ask yourself further questions. What do you smell, hear, feel, taste, see? Trust that once you've inhabited that scene with all of your senses and you're clear on what you want to communicate with that scene, the desired words to make that scene a reality will come. But what if you're staring at that blank page and you don't even know where to begin? You have a deadline, maybe, a short story due for a creative writing class, or a story contest deadline is coming up, but your head is empty as the page in front of you. To answer that problem, I'm going to again turn to Julia Cameron, who who I mentioned... Uh. To answer that problem, I'm again going to turn to Julia Cameron. At the end of Right to Write's first chapter, Cameron suggests this. To take three sheets of paper, start at the top of the paper, and then fill all three pages with how you are feeling right now, physically, emotionally, and psychologically. She recommends allowing yourself to be excited, adventurous, petty, scared, critical, and write about anything that comes to mind. And I personally do recommend writing by hand here. It really is a different experience when you write on paper. For one thing, it's a lot messier, which is what you want when you're free writing. And secondly, writing by hand keeps you more awake. Not just by not falling asleep, but it livens up the associative parts of your brain, which helps you generate and elaborate on ideas. Looking back at the more sentence-level concerns we addressed earlier, Roy Peter Clark in his book Writing Tools suggests this at the end of his first chapter. Quote, Read through a newspaper with a pencil in hand. Mark locations of subjects and verbs and articles. Do the same with some of your own more complete writing or writing you value and aspire to emulate. Then, turn back to those troublesome sections on your first page. The next time you struggle to write a sentence, rewrite it by placing subject and verb at the beginning. Save writing a sentence with subject and verb near the end for dramatic purposes. Refer back to your earlier markings to better understand how energy and drama are established at a sentence level." Unquote. Sometimes passive sentences stop us from engaging with our own writing. We're not yet excited by our own words. Like I said before, writing should be adventurous and fun. If ever it starts to drag, you won't do your best work, which can leave you feeling even more deflated. So have fun with your writing. Get yourself excited to express yourself. In the end, I want to encourage us to remember what Dorothea Brande in Becoming a Writer says about the writer's internal critic, who can so rudely intervene when you're trying to write those first few lines. Quote, They, the critics, are valuable only once the author has done enough work to warrant evaluation and revision. Until then, they must be silenced. Unquote. So, even if your first step isn't a perfect one, it's still the most important one in a journey of a thousand miles. And that's going to close out this lesson. Next episode, we'll tackle that most familiar nemesis of any writer, their inner critic. I wish you all the best as you navigate the wide open word sea and experience the wonder of writing. See you next time.